would hope that the uh, committee would actually listen to me for the two minutes. You guys are not listening to the other members who spoke today. So I think I'll wait until you're listening. Ma'am, your time is running. Uh, yeah, uh, thank, uh, thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, okay, look, uh, with furloughs off the table, all that remains of the appropriations to rec and parks for them to use for city services is 56% of their budget. That's a crime. It's basically an attack on the low income people and the low socioeconomic people in this city who utilize parks heavily. Rec and Parks does everything that libraries do. They're safe places to go on weekends where kids receive educational programming, same as libraries. But in addition to that, they provide exercise and healthy eating and things like this. And this is at a time when people in your district, up to 25% of the children, have uh, it, it, morbid obesity in this town. So this budget is highly punitive to department where you get the best bang for the buck for the health of your kids in this city. Let's look at some of the punitive things that are going on. This trash collection fee, the trash is thrown there by the citizens, same as it is on the streets. Who's being charged when it's being picked up just off the streets, out of empty lots, whatever? How is this uh, a charge that should be directed to the department? ERIP, I understand that the uh, many other departments are getting paid ERIP back through a loan process. Why is Recreation and Parks the only one required to put out cash? The water and power deal, uh, you know, if Rec and Parks were a uh, person, a ratepayer, this uh, Department of uh, Water and Power would have to pay them franchise fees. Why isn't that happening? There needs to be some fair exchange with respect to that money. Um, you know, as a volunteer, I put in 900 hours of physical hard labor for this department. I do it because I believe in the core mission. Um, you know, the funds that are allocated directly to the department say that the citizens of Los Angeles agree with me. I need to see this committee stand up for this department. Thank Re you, ma'am. Chairman you Park stood up for libraries. Please, let's see some members here stand up. Thank you. Thank Adams, you. Executive Officer of Recreation and Parks, if you allow me, I'll take a few moments to uh, give you a walkthrough of the mayor's proposed budget for our department. Although the total is a, a little over $179 million, um, the, we sent you a letter breaking down what this means for us and what we will have to actually operate with. Uh, in the letter, one of the things we mentioned is that um, since fiscal year 2007-08 coming forward, which um, the next fiscal year will be the fifth year, we have now been directed to pay part of our indirect costs. Uh, that we know we didn't have to pay many years ago. Uh, up through the end of this current fiscal year that ends on June 30th, we will have paid over $60 million toward our indirect costs that we used to be able to use to provide programs and services and maintenance for our department and for the residents of the city of Los Angeles. With the mayor's proposed budget, that increases up by another $44 million. So by the end of the next fiscal year, we will have expended over $100 million uh, toward indirect costs that we no longer have to use for programs and services and maintenance in the department. Um, we laid that out for you in exhibit two on the line that shows support costs. You can see how we increased. Uh, although we're showing zero on fiscal year 2007-08, we actually paid $1,250,000 for that first year. And you can see we went from $1,250,000 to over $3,000,000 the next year, which also included $1.2 million, so it was actually over $4 million. Fiscal year 2009-10, we jumped to 20 million. Fiscal year 10-11, which we're in right now, is going to be 38 million. And going into the new fiscal year, it's going to be $44 million. The main page I'd like for you to, to uh, draw your attention to is Exhibit 3 that was in the report that we presented to you. This shows a breakdown of our proposed budget for the next fiscal year. It shows, first of all, where the $179 million is supposed to be coming from, and the majority of that's going to be coming from our city charter mandated portion, which is a little over $38 million. But please note that that is $2.3 million less than what we currently have this fiscal year because the property taxes have dropped. And also, please note that in our budget for next fiscal year, we are self-funding over $3 million. So we had to adjust our spending for this year so that we could have over $3.3 million to apply toward our own budget for the new fiscal year. Um, also, what we're showing here, the bottom line at the bottom of this exhibit, is that out of our budget, we have about 64% of our budget that we will be able to actually use to provide our own programs and services. 36% of our budget will already be uh, dedicated for other purposes. 
As I mentioned, for our indirect costs, it's going to be about $44 million, and that's comprised of $16 million for water and electricity, $20 million we could be going to be contributing toward our own retirement health and benefit costs, and we also have a new line item where we're going to have to pay $3.7 million for our trash costs, and we also have to pay the second e payout uh, for those retirees who left on the early retirement, the second payment of $4.3 million. Also, for a dedicated cost, we also provide services at other city entities, which include the Harbor Department, which reimburses us over $7 million. El Pueblo, we do their landscaping, and they reimburse us for $100,000. And the mayor has also continued for us uh, $2 million in general funds for us to continue to provide the public buildings landscape services. We do landscape services for other city facilities, which include police stations, fire stations, etc. And also, uh, there's a new line item in this budget, which is for us to continue service set at seven housing authority sites, which is $1 million, has been placed in general funds. This is a service that we were already doing, but one of the things that we brought to the mayor's office and the CAO's attention was that uh, as we are now being pushed further off the general fund, that we now, if we are providing services for at other locations that are not on um, uh, parkland sites, then we have to be reimbursed for them. So this could add $1 million for us to be able to continue to provide recreation and maintenance service at seven housing authority sites throughout the city and also uh, we also have other mandated costs such as brush clearance and, and property taxes and things like that we, we have to pay so the main item here that we're trying to bring to your attention is that although our budget is a little over 179 million dollars um, one of the things that we the big thing here is that years ago we used to be able to apply all of our budget for us to be able to provide programs services and maintenance and now we only have 64 percent of our budget to be able to dedicate to that purpose. Uh, we also noted that we um, we are expect to have a $2 million revenue uh, reduction in addition to the $2.3 million property tax reduction, reduction that I had mentioned. Um, we also uh, included Exhibit 5 for you, which is a listing of about three pages of the things that we no longer do or we have drastically reduced the services and programs that we no longer provide to the residents of the city of Los Angeles. And over the years, uh, the last few years with these budget reductions, it has equated to about 500 full-time positions that we've lost as well as about 3,000 equivalency about 3,000 part-time positions that we no longer have on staff so I just wanted to give you that overview recall the DWP always charged the city um, for water and electricity I don't know if that was always the case why they started um, and also if you would give us a little background on on how all these department chargebacks started happening have we always had departments charge each other back for their services. Um, what, what's, what's been the history of all this over the years? You asked uh, a number of questions. So water and electricity, uh, actually as a proprietary department, uh, the DWP has been charging the city for, for years. And uh, we probably need Mr. LeBon to give us some, some history, but I'm sure it goes back a good since the inception. Um, took a good 40, 50, 60 years, or maybe even longer. Um, it, they are required, um, you know, they also provide you know, water and, and services to uh, the school district. Uh, they do charge the school district. Um, we're in a situation where they cannot treat one public agency different than another. Um, and if they were to, to perhaps uh, allow the city to, to basically not send them a bill, they would also be uh, under some legal constraints to, to actually do something similar to the school district. And I'm, I'm sure we can have the city attorney sort of explain it a little bit better. Uh, we have gone through a lawsuit. We were sued a couple of years ago by the school district uh, regarding DWP in sort of a, a similar type situation. And, and so we are required, uh, DWP, I should say, is required to, to charge the city for those particular services. The chargeback concept actually has, uh, I know, has gone back to the mid-90s with the Reardon administration with some other um, the categories, liability claims, um, some IT services, things of that sort. Um, that was sort of painful back then. Over the years, certainly uh, during the, this decade, uh, there has been a movement to, to actually look at some departments and make them uh, to, to take a more holistic view on the expenditures or the expenses in order to run a particular department. 
Um, in this particular case with Rec and Parks, they do have a $15 million water and electricity bill that is part of their operations, part of the direct operations. They ended up ultimately deciding was that because um, because it was already built into their base of their appropriation, we didn't finance the ERIP payment for Rec and Parks or libraries. So. Uh, um, I want to be clear. Even though it's in our budget base, it's coming from our direct appropriations, our own revenue. There's no additional money for ERIP payouts from any source other than our own funds that we control. Yes, and, and Mr. McCree is correct in that. And, but what, what he's saying is, I think it's roughly 4.3 million you just said? Yes. Is there another way they can do it and rather than having to take it from their general operating costs that they could be creative going forward on this? It's a one-time it's a one-time cost. Oh, I understand, but it's still 4.3 million against their reality. Is is there another creative angle we can look at? Well, one of the the things that actually is helping out the department is we understand there's a, a large potential rollover savings from the current year of over three million dollars that certainly can be used to match up one time for one time cost. Just in the proper that three million dollars is part of our expenditure plan today. I can't spend it twice. The rollover from last year is going to self-finance the department today. All right, so can, can we hear back on that? Okay, thank you. I know that's going in the weeds, but, but let me go into a more general issue now.